This is Joshua Ray Walker, and this is Real Life, Real Music. Real Life, Real Music Radio. With your host, Kyle Hutton. Well, welcome, gentlemen, all of you. It's our pleasure, man. We're very, very glad for you to be here tonight. Glad to be here. I don't know where else you would be on a Wednesday night, but you probably have somewhere you would be, and we're just honored that you're here with us. Ah, thank you. Well, I'd rather be here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend quite a bit of time tonight asking you questions and, and uh, leading you down little bunny trails, and we'll see where they go. But, uh, man, I got to hear you guys at Soundcheck, and I, I, it just you sound great. Why don't y'all pick a song and just kick us off however you see fit tonight? Sure. Well, I hear you're going to Austin. That ain't no place for me. But if you want to find me, Dallas is where I'll be. I'm gonna sit at this bar in Dallas till I drink Milwaukee dry. Till I see that Ivory Palace, I'm a cowboy until I die. Billies. You said you wouldn't care if they killed me I didn't come here looking for a fight I rode the bull tonight So that was appropriate because uh, that's where you drove in from, right? That's right. We so came you in hail, from Dallas you, today. You, you hail from the east side of Dallas. Tell us how long you've been there. Uh, born and raised, you know, then bounced around for years uh, and then ended up there about five years ago, actually. Bought the house I grew up in uh, from my grandmother. And uh, yeah, just been fixing it up, trying to keep my roots in East Dallas. Yeah. I love that side of the city, you know, it's a really diverse side of town. Um, great people, great food, you know, influenced the type of music I listened to. It was a mainly Hispanic community growing up, so I was, you know, listening to a lot of uh, Cajunto and like Tejano stuff growing up, and I think that had some influence on my music. Well, and that that you know, East Dallas, South Dallas, Oak Cliff, that like that whole area has been like a hotbed for. Artist Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Martin Murphy, who arguably started the outlaw country movement, right? Was right. from that area. So, uh, who would you say were maybe some of the people you were looking at 
locally, and they may not even be household names, but who were some of the people you were looking at locally when you were learning to play guitar and going, you know what, I think I want to do that? I started playing uh, bluegrass first. Okay. So most of those records came you know, from East Tennessee or Kentucky or whatever. But I think I was 11 when I got my first electric guitar, and immediately I wanted to play Stevie Ray Vaughan songs. Um, I think everybody who plays guitar in Texas goes through a Stevie Ray Vaughan phase. <laughs> and then after that, as far as like local, you know, musicians that made an impact on me, um, you, you know, old 97s are from the same uh, neighborhood that I grew up in. Yeah. And they helped start the alt country scene, and there's always been a real uh, deep rooted history of that in my neighborhood and just Dallas as a whole. Um, I used to sneak into this guy's shows, John Pettigo over here. It's my producer and lead guitar player sometimes, and um, he used to open up for old ninety sevens, and I used to go sneak into his shows. So it's you know it's a generational yeah. thing. Like uh, I mean, did you sneak into old ninety seven shows? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> pass it down the line. Yeah. And then, you know, 1100 Springs. Yeah. Um, they're a Dallas band. I'd say, you know, maybe the best country band in Texas. Mm. They just called it quits uh, earlier this year, and I got to open up their last show, which was really special, at the Granada Theater in East Dallas. So yeah. Yeah. it was a real full circle. I used to sneak into their shows, too. That's awesome. Well, yeah. okay, so, so as a musician, because we're going to talk about songwriting a little bit later, but as, just as a musician, what is one of your favorite songs to play with these guys just just pick one of your favorite m that musically tell us why and then play it for us okay um i think it's a song called cupboard off the second record um and i don't have any real reason other than i just really enjoy playing it you know okay. it's fun to play so musically and musically it's a little different than some of our other stuff um you know it's got kind of almost like a Dire Straits vibe to it. Right. Um, and it's just a real fun one to to play and sing. He's shaking out his hands over there. So he's, he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> that means this is going to be good. <laughs>
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I could see why. I could see why you like to play that one. Okay, so, so uh, you know, stylistic influences. You've, you've mentioned the Tejano, uh, uh, you know, scene. Um, obviously, country western. I mean, you've been compared to singers like Dwight Yoakam, and you know, like, like those roots obviously run deep. But there's a whole rock and roll, punk rock kind of thing that goes on in Deep Ellum and goes on in you. Yeah. So tell us a little bit like the, the different musical stylings that have brought you to where you are now. I mean, I really listen to everything. I know that's cliche and people say that, but I love, you know, uh, South African blues and, you know, like I listen to jazz. I listen to thrash metal. I listen to, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, and so I guess it just comes from a little bit of everywhere. I mean, uh, when I was first playing in bands, I think my biggest influence was Jack White. Yeah. I wanted to play guitar like Jack White. So, you know, that was a, a big one for me, age 12, 13, around there. Started playing in bands for the first time, and then all through junior high and high school, you know, you can't really find people to play country music with. <laughs> um, so I was playing in rock bands, uh, yeah. punk bands, metal bands, rock bands, um, playing lead guitar for people, okay. and then didn't start writing my own stuff till I was like 19, and didn't start playing country songs out till I was about 21. I didn't think I could write or sing at the time, so it took a while. Well, it's kind of, and isn't that kind of funny, because now when you read in the press about Joshua Ray Walker, the things that they talk about first, they talk about the voice, and they talk about the songs. Right. <laughs> right? So it's, that's been an interesting turn for you, I'm sure, to, to even internalize that and recognize that, that gift that you have. Yeah, it took me a long time to admit to myself that I could sing. Like, I, I didn't even consider myself a singer until maybe three or four years ago, around the time we started recording the first record. Huh. So, that's yeah. That's wild. Okay. Well, uh, then, then I'm just going to go ahead and ask you about one of the songs, uh, one of the songs where your voice just, uh, just haunts me. It may be too early in the show to ask this, but I, I'm going to ask you about the song Flash Paper. And maybe yep. if you would... Uh, Tell us about that. I mean, that song's sure. got got a lot of depth to it, <clears throat> just from where it's coming from for you, and then obviously lyrically, but the vocal delivery on it's just amazing. Um, so on my first record, I have a song called Canyon, and I wrote that song uh, when my dad was diagnosed with cancer. He got diagnosed in uh, 2016, and that song was about my relationship with him, and it opened up the first record. And uh, my first three records are all kind of one trilogy. And it's about the, you know, the final days of this fictional honky-tonk. And I wrote about all the characters in this honky-tonk. And that's what that three albums are about. <clears throat> and my dad uh, passed away right before we recorded the third record. And I thought since uh, the first album opened up on a song about him getting sick, it would be fitting if true life mimicked art, you know. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a song about... Um, his life coming to a close on the last album. So um, I didn't set out for it to be that way, but he passed and I wrote this song and it's called Flash Paper. He, my dad left me a box of uh, keepsakes and you know, like, uh, it looked like he cleared out his junk drawer. <laughs> you know, that box of stuff you keep that only you know what it is, you know? Maybe it's a post-it from you know, a note someone left you or, you know, a shoelace from your favorite hiking trip or whatever, you know, just weird stuff you hang on to for sentimental reasons. Well, when you just hand that box to somebody with no context, it's hard to figure out, yeah. you know, what it all means. So I spent a couple of days going through it and um, kind of realized what it was. Um, and in there, he left a, a flash drive for me to watch this video. His He made like a goodbye video to me. And uh, he told me to wait until Christmas to watch it. He passed in November, and I did, and it was sad, and as you would expect. Yeah. Um, but he just said a lot of things in the video that I wish he had had the courage to say when he was still around, you know? So it was kind of, I had a lot of emotions about what I saw. I was grateful that he shared these more 
um, vulnerable, you know, things with me. But at the same time, I was frustrated and also sad for him that he didn't feel comfortable doing that while he was alive. And um, that's what Flash Paper is about, really. And I play this one pretty rarely. Like, I... I wrote it all in one night, and then we went and cut it the next day because um, we were in the process of making the record. And I kind of, I didn't forget about the song, but I didn't want to revisit it, and I forgot to relearn the song when we had our album release. So like a year after recording it, we were, I, I think I literally realized on stage that I needed to play the song that night wow. at my hometown release, and I limped my way through the song. And so since then, I've decided I'm not going to relearn it. And every time I play it, it's a little bit different. And uh, so would you like to hear a version of it? We, we would be honored if you would, you would play it. Could you say it like it's the last time? Or would that make you cry? So you keep it all inside. You write it down. Cause you can't make a sound Lying traces to be found Some are cardstock with embossed letters Some have tears where holes were meant to bind Some are just flash paper with words so quickly penned Burn never to be read ever again Burn never to be read ever again Burn never to be read ever again could hear you speak those lines instead of saying that you're fine or would that make you cry so you keep it all inside you write it down Cause you can make a sound Lying traces to be found In a cigar box with notes and letters And little things you'd usually pay no mind Simple words mean more than all the syllables combined Like I love you And I'll miss you too Like I love you And I'll miss you too Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that one with us. Yeah. So, so uh, since you've since you've talked about it, 
Is is Canyon one that you guys play in the mm -hmm. set? You want to? Yeah. We'll, we'll do that maybe as a prequel, and you play that one for us now. Yeah, sure. Okay, I can do that. But my feet can't take me far This is by my own doing So I tell stories at the bar Yeah, I'm afraid of flying Afraid of falling, truth be told I don't get close to edges I'm afraid that I'll let go I'm a big, big man Not just in size or in stature In terms of space that can't be filled I'm a bottomless canyon Without a drop to spill Are you proud of me? Are you proud of what I do? I'll try to be a better man than the one that you knew I'm gonna miss you when you're not around Though I wasn't around for you When your broken body's in the ground I hope there's room for two Space that can't be filled. I'm a bottomless canyon without a drop to spill. Space that can't be filled. I'm a bottomless canyon without a drop to spill. Yeah, I'm a bottomless canyon without a drop to spill. Thank you. So that was the first the first track on the record. Wish you were here, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get this story right. I, I did a little bit of reading, you know, and if I go, you know, Google everything on Google is the truth, right? That's so, right. so uh, now I've I've learned to to be careful. Sometimes the stories that I read uh, are, are not as accurate as they seem. But I, I read something about uh, maybe some of the company that you kept when you were a young lad. Uh, being working girls, um, girls that, uh, you know, that wore bikinis for a living and, and did some yeah. different stuff. So that's kind of, you know, somewhat of a, I, I don't know, a, a, a dream thought for a young, uh, <laughs> for, for a young guy. So enlighten us on the, on bikinis in the Walker house. Well, I think the, I think the song you're referring to is probably boat show girl. Okay. Yeah. Um, Working girls are a little different. They didn't. I wouldn't say they went that far, but you know, they gotcha. did. They did. Got gotcha. you. They wore bikinis for for a living. My mom uh, did PR for um, motorsports companies. Okay. And so, she was in charge of a lot of stuff, a lot of event planning. But one of the things she did was she would hire the girls for trade shows. So you know, um, boat shows tractor trailer shows whatever in the 90s there were a lot of girls in bikinis holding signs and passing out bud light lime samples or whatever sure. um and usually it was at like family friendly events you know yeah like your uncle would get a picture with them like <laughs> on next year's toro or whatever and um 
I was at those events all the time with my mom. She would take me around on the weekends, and I guess I got a behind-the-scenes look at kind of that uh, that profession. And I was just thought it was so weird and so funny. Like, what a you know weird thing to do. And then I grew up and. I started uh, selling beer for a living being up here. I was just <laughs> supposed to keep people entertained long enough to get them to buy beer, and that's really all their job was. So I guess I felt that kinship. And, uh, yeah, but, yeah, they were they were around. They became family friends, and some of them were babysitters. And, you know, and then a few years ago at Christmas, my mom told me, I don't know why I didn't ask, um, but she was like, y- you know where I found a- those girls, right? And I was like, no, I don't need to know. But she was, she was going around to the gentlemen's clubs, scouting the talent. Gotcha. And, uh, so yeah, my my babysitters growing up were all dancers. <laughs> like I said, every young lad's dream. <laughs> no. Uh, how about uh, boat show girl? Sure, we can do that. Are y'all doing okay out there so far? Y'all having a good time? Okay, good. Brighter than the boats you stand around Your gaze is somewhere yonder Woman, I eye you up and down Those five-inch heels ain't nothing Compared to what you left back home Yeah, you ain't even chilly Though you're wearing skin and bone You stand there on your altar Astro turf beneath your feet Like a redneck statue of liberty This phrase rings out as you greet Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses Waiting on the shore May you board this fiberglass vessel And not feel empty anymore Cause freedom ain't that free Happiness can't be cheap For zero down and less than you spend on cigarettes every week You can take this beauty home Treat her like you should Just like every boat show girl wishes that you would Your mascara's running Wins a foot race every time You're good at what you're doing You can stop them on a dime Bathed in sequins, a beacon when daddy did you wrong Yeah, fake tan covers bruises, but it doesn't last that long And freedom made that free, happiness can be cheap For zero down and less than you spend on cigarettes every week You can take this beauty home, treat her like you should just like every boat show girl wishes that you would can be cheap for zero down and less than you spend on cigarettes every week you can take this beauty home and treat her like you should just like every boat show girl wishes that you would yeah just like every boat show girl wishes that you would Thank you. All right, so you, you, you mentioned that first guitar. Was it 11, and you started really getting serious at 12? I mean, I'd, I'd been playing acoustic since I was five. Okay. And then, yeah, I got the electric at 11. 
Gotcha. And when did you write your first song? Um, like lyrics yeah. and everything. I was 19. 19. Yeah. Okay. And, and when, how long did it take before you allowed yourself to call yourself a songwriter? Oh, I was probably, I don't even know, 25, 26, yeah. 27. Because that's a like real that. obscure, like there's no number. Like it's right. not like, okay, if you've written this many songs, now you have the right to call yourself a songwriter. It's almost like whenever you have the guts to call yourself a songwriter, <laughs> then, yeah, then, yeah. No, then, it's true. then you're a songwriter right? Yeah. So, okay. So started writing at 19. And I, I mean, one of the things that, that I notice uh, about your music is that you seem to just have found a lot of inspiration from just what was transpiring in front of you as you were growing up. You know, a lot of people, right. they, they sit down and, and they focus on writing stuff that's outside of themselves but uh, a lot of the stuff that you've played tonight and a lot of the stuff that you've cut on your records seems to be stuff that you saw with your own eyes and, and lived through. Do you find yourself writing more in that vein? or? Yeah, I mean, I, I write from a character's perspective a lot. Okay. And uh, a few years into writing, I had a lot of songwriter friends around me. And I guess we just got to talking about it, and they kind of brought up that that was my style, that I write from a character's perspective. And I, I've never been a student of songwriting. I never even really listened to lyrics um, before my 20s. Like, I I just listened to the riff or the beat or the bass, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't realize that I was doing anything different, like, stylistically. Um and then someone asked me why I did that, and I was like, I don't know. I didn't even know I was doing that, really. So I had to think about it, and what I, the conclusion I came to was that I would write from these characters' perspectives so that I could talk about things about myself that I was maybe too self-conscious to write about. And so all of these songs are rooted in things that have to do with me, but I'm just not... It's not always in the first person, yeah. you know? I'm using other things or places to kind of explore um, things about myself. So I would say I've experienced something that triggered me writing most of these songs, but, you know, they're not all, they're definitely not all, like, autobiographical. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, okay. Is there one, like, was there a moment where uh, in a song that maybe you still play every night when you're out on the road, was there a song when you first thought, man, I, I'm really onto something here. Like, I, I think I can really write a song. Is there one that stands out in your brain that uh, yeah. it's kind of a stake in the ground of, hey, I, I think I'm really doing this now? Yeah, I'd say there's one that's called Lot Lizard. It's on my first record. Okay. And um, that one's definitely like a character study. There's two characters in it. They're singing at each other, you know. And that, I think that might even be the song that my friend brought up. They're like, that's pretty complicated. Why did, why did you do that? You know? Yeah. Um, it's confusing to the listener. Um, and uh, I was like, I don't know. That's just how I, I wrote it. But um, so that one's a good, you know, example of one of those character songs. And also um, that's one of the first ones where, like, I looked at my own lyrics and I was like, those are pretty good. <laughs> you know, yeah, like I, yeah. I impressed myself with my songwriting. That's awesome. Yeah. All so, right. Y'all want to hear it? Here we go. Yeah. Lots of cups up here. Cigarette burn on my chest just to say I love you. The 
say you could treat me better But I just can't stand the weather when it rains I say I love you too Just to pay my Lord dues. Well, I could try to treat you better. Give me a chance, as gosh darn weather it'll be. An hour or two. So you mentioned bluegrass uh, early on is, is one of the earliest styles. But where, like, like, who were you listening to that helped you uh, kind of find your way to your vocal styling in the in the country realm? I mean, who who were you listening to that inspired some of that mournful? stuff you got going on when i was real young uh i became obsessed with this slim whitman record that okay. had uh rosemary on it and um he was kind of a wacky he's like a crooner you know 40s 50s 60s crooner guy but he had this real uh wacky falsetto with a lot of vibrato in it yeah and i used to try to mimic his voice okay. and so i think that you know that influenced the way that i would come to sing later and uh, my grandpa had a record of old cattle call, and, like cowpoke songs, and I used to try to mimic those yips and yodels and and stuff. And then, you know, Dwight Yoakam, as I got a little older and started listening to '90s country, and then um, uh, Roy Orbison was a big influence on me. I love his singing. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. All right, so let me ask this: How many of you know that this guy was on the Jimmy Fallon show? 
How many of you watched it? How many of you saw it? How many of you saw it? Okay. I, I think we got to give them a little, uh, give them a little history lesson on the, the, the Joshua Ray Walker on the Jimmy Fallon show, because you know, it's all about show business, right? That's right. And, uh, yeah, tell us about that. And then, and uh, did you just play one song, or did you get to play a couple of songs? One song. Did you play uh, "Sex Sexy Sexy Yeah. Yeah. So maybe tell us a story, and then if you guys want to play that, play that one for us. Yeah, of the song or of the Tonight Show. <laughs> you want to know the Tonight <laughs> Show? I want to know experience? the Tonight Show experience, and then you can tell us about the song. So, the uh, performance you saw was all smoke and mirrors. That was recorded in Dallas, Texas. We uh, we went to New York. And uh, flew in, and we had to get tested immediately when we landed. And one of the members tested positive for COVID two days after testing negative for COVID. And we were quarantined and told that the HR department at NBC would get back to us. And uh, But it all sounded good. It sounded very positive. We were being told that it was all going to go fine and everything would be okay. And maybe we'd have to get a fill-in or something. But... It was going to happen, and then uh, the night before we were going to go to 30 Rock, we got a call that it was not happening, and we actually uh, were going to be in New York for two days for no reason at the peak of the Omicron uh, outbreak, and it was more expensive to change flights and book and uh, cancel hotel rooms than it was to just sit there, so we all got to just sit and think for a few days in New York (laughs) and then fly back home. And then we got the call that we could do a pre-tape and get our performance on air as quickly as possible or wait and potentially not get to play The Tonight Show. So we had to make the tough decision to do a pre-tape and we had about 10 days to pull it off and uh, we did it. (laughs) But uh, this guy uh, engineered, (laughs) uh, engineered, produced, mixed and mastered the audio for that as well as editing all the video that uh, our friend Josh Jordan shot. And he had just just over 48 hours to do it. And also all the costumes, the set dressings, the, the location, the musicians, the guy, I mean, we had to learn how to use in-ears. A lot of, was, of that was crammed. We had to send it in 11 days after we found out we were doing it. So we shot it a week after finding out, and man, Trying to put something that complicated together in a week was really something. <laughs> and then, and it was so stressful. The whole situation <laughs> was so stressful. Um, flying there, coming back, not doing it, finding out we right. got a pre tape, the whole thing, it was wild. And the whole time we were just trying to hold it together and be excited and try not to be disappointed and all at the same time. Yeah. And, um, But it really, the big payoff was, um, you know, if you do it in New York, you're in New York when it airs, and you're sitting at a bar somewhere with the guys that you're in the band with. But because we did a pre-tape, we got to be in Dallas the night that it aired. And so we we had a big uh, hometown watch party um, planned, and we surprised everybody and showed up and played a show. Um, (laughs) They're like, wait a minute, this is blowing my mind. (laughs) And it was... uh, one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to do. It was such an emotional night, and um, really, I think it is probably my favorite night as a musician so far was cool. surprising the hometown audience and playing the show, and then being there with the hometown crowd that came out to watch the show with them, and I left covered in beer. Every time <laughs> Every time my face or my name was on screen, everybody would just start whipping beers around. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was great. That's awesome. Okay, Sexy After Dark. you got to tell us about it. And by the way, yeah. uh, then you need to go buy a hat with Sexy After Dark on it right or T-shirts there. or whatever. we got merch right over here after the show, so make sure and stop by. Sexy After Dark is a, a song that I thought probably wasn't going to make the record. I had the hook in my head, and I had a guitar riff, and uh, I brought it to the band, and as soon as they played it in the studio, I was like, oh, we have to do it it was just immediately we all thought it was good but it was pretty far outside of our wheelhouse so we had to figure out how to make it country and uh, I think we did a pretty good job it's a great song thank you and uh, what it's about I mean I wrote this like mid-pandemic and I had been 
as a musician that travels a lot, even if you're not a musician, I love going to dive bars. And I especially love befriending strangers and just like getting to know a person for the first time. Not, it doesn't have to be romantic or whatever, just like that spark you get meeting someone that you hit it off with and you're sharing things about your life and whatever. I really enjoy that moment. And I think I must have been missing it halfway through the pandemic. And I thought about all the different ways you can portray yourself in that situation. You know, if I'm in Omaha for a night and I go to a dive bar, I can be Dave, whoever, you know, and I'm in town sending, you know, selling dental products or whatever. Like I, I don't lie about it that much, but I've done it before. <laughs> I mean, you can literally okay, be, okay, Dave, <laughs> you can be, you can be anybody. Um, and that's kind of where the idea for the song came from. And then just went from there and then it went with the groove and the band added what they did to it. It sounds like this. Yep. Everybody still doing okay out there? Y'all having a good time tonight? 
I told you I was going to have my Porter Wagner moment during the show. I just want to say thank you again to the Griffin Realty Group. If anybody, I, I don't know about you, but I live not too far from here, just over in Magnolia. And the things that are going on in real estate right now are absolutely crazy. And trying to navigate your way through selling a house, buying a house, should I even think about moving? Uh, all of those are difficult questions right now. But uh, I always feel like you ought to do business with people in your community that put money back into the things that you love. And Griffin Realty Group has been a sponsor with us uh, and really helps us make this happen. If you guys got have any real estate needs, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to Griffin Realty Group. And uh, they've got a couple of satisfied clients that relocated from California over here to Texas. So welcome. We're glad you're here with us. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Hope you're enjoying the show. Um, man, Chicago title, Houston, uh, we could not uh, have made the shows over the last couple of years happen without them. We've got Gail Brand and Steve's here and his mom. And uh, man, they, they do a lot to support this community. Uh, and to us, not the least of which is help us get songwriters like this up here on the stage uh, to hear their stories. So thank you guys for what you do. And then uh, Caldwell Communities, um, again, I, I want to feature uh, their new neighborhood that's up in Willis called Chambers Creek. It's a 55, I forget how they say it. They don't say 55 and up. They say 55 and better, I think. <laughs> and we've got one of the ladies that has really helped them design their messaging and their community out there. And uh, we appreciate you guys being here tonight. And thanks for everything you do to help us make this show possible. So... Let's give our sponsors a round of applause. Thank you for helping us with this. And uh, you guys doing all right? You want to introduce this Motley crew that's yeah. here with you tonight? So I already said, that's John Pettigo over there. Howdy, Howdy John. We got Trey Pendergrass here behind the drums. Very nice, very nice. And that's uh, Billy Bones over there on the harmony and the bass guitar. He's uh, Billy's been with me since my first full band show. Really? Wow. Yeah. And actually, we co-hosted the show where I played my original music in front of people for the first time. It was like 10 years ago. That's so, awesome. been doing it together a long time. Been on this ride. Yeah. yeah. And in the music, I always say it's like dog years, right? So if you've been touring with somebody for 10 years, that's like 46 years. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, it's a great band, man, and y'all sound super tonight. Thank you. Why don't you? I've been kind of leading you down a bunch of different roads. Why don't you just pick one you want to play and, and uh, tell just us about pick it? Pick one. All right. How about uh, how about y'all pick? What do y'all want to do? Oh, there you go. A band pick. <laughs> <laughs> you asked. Yeah. We won't be doing that one tonight. Uh, that's about a seven-minute uh, jam that devolves into a metal breakdown. So, gotcha. That's not the one. Cowboy? Yeah, sure. Let's do cowboy. Cowboy. Uh, cowboy. <laughs> it's the opposite of DB Cooper. This song. Uh, so. You know, we talked about how I played a bunch of shows, but in 2020, I didn't play any shows. Well, I played like three. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of free time to write, and so I tried to do it as much as I could. That's the only thing I felt I could do that was of any use, really. And uh, I really started pushing to try to write for other people, and I had this song commissioned um, from me that wasn't used, uh, that I liked, and it was written for a female artist, and then it sat around for a while, and I decided to put it on my record. This is it, it's called Cowboy. You're playing cowboy, there ain't no rodeo. It's time to be a man, boy. No more blowing smoke Should give you second chances At her own nights You won't hang up your spurs Cause you're playing cowboy You 
spend your time thrift store denim shopping you want someone at home to cook and do the mopping you can talk the talk but you can't walk those dirt roads that you've seen cause if you did those snakeskin boots wouldn't be so damn clean you're playing cowboy there ain't no rodeo it's time to be a man boy no more blowing smoke should give you second chances at romance you won't hang up your spurs cause you're playing cowboy From a tourist western store I'm done playing cowboy There ain't no rodeo It's time to be a man boy No more blowing smoke Should give you second chances At a romance You won't hang up your spurs Cause you're playing cowboy Thank you. Well, talking about talking about characters, I want to ask you about one uh, on your most recent record, and that's Welfare Chet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Welfare Chet. Well, uh, I think we've all met him before. You know, there's a line in that song that talks about um, having a guy up in your face, like eating a hot dog at the end of the night when you're trying to close out and you're at a bar that doesn't sell hot dogs. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite lines I've ever written. Um, I, I don't know why. <laughs> just It just is. Um, but yeah, you know, we've all met that guy. The guy who just kind of appears at the bar, you know. He probably was sleeping in his truck before he came in. Yeah. Um, and back, you know, when I was growing up, there were a lot of like true dive bars in East Dallas that aren't really there anymore. They aren't really much anywhere anymore, you know. Um, and it's just about those guys that you knew were going to be there every day. You know, there's this old bar in Dallas called the Winedale that I used to sneak into. You remember that place? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, they knew I was like 14 and they didn't care, you know. Uh, and same four guys at the end of the bar every day. And well, something about that just struck me. You know, their lives are, I think some people look at them and might think it's sad or whatever, but they seem pretty fulfilled. They had friends, they had something to do, you know. They enjoyed themselves. So I don't know, it just stuck with me and eventually turned into a song. You want to play it? You know what? We haven't even been playing that one. But I have a song of very similar sentiment, if you want to hear yeah, that one. Yeah, Absolutely. This one's called Dumpster Diving. <laughs> yep. I went dumpster diving, did it for a living, I didn't for the surviving. Yeah, I made a killing of a what we could find. Never met somebody like you. Ooh. Lit up by the glow of a 
trash can fire was the face of a woman and I hadn't desired Sometimes what you're looking for doesn't transpire But there she was between the old tin foil Over half a gallon of some used motor oil What looks to be a broken heater coil Didn't know what I was searching for till I found you I went dumpster diving Did it for a living I did more than survive you guys to be in uh, this is this is your time to shine right now okay i, I need a liner for the start start of the show so okay. if you'll say this is joshua ray walker and this is real life real music all right then i need you guys to just go nuts okay we'll do that for about four minutes and then i'll cut you off <laughs> no i'm just kidding so you give us a liner you guys go nuts and then i'll go like this when we got enough enough tape all right this is Joshua Ray Walker, and this is Real Life, Real Music. Perfect. <laughs> was that him? No. Where'd that come from? That was great. <laughs> All right. Were y'all having fun? Y'all need anything? Y'all good? You good back there? Good. All right. Okay. Well, we want to do another band choice. Let's do another band choice. Anything? You all right? What, what, what would the band like to play? Well, we just started doing a new radio single, so we should probably get around to that yeah, one. Yeah, right? let's do it. Tell us about it. Uh, this one's called Three Strikes. Okay. And it's uh, one of my favorite ones to play off the new record. Cause it's once, twice, three strikes of felony. But if I keep on messing around, this drinking will get the best of me. Cause it's once, twice, three strikes of felony. But who knows if my luck runs out, I guess we'll have. Around the 
up to that stump Tires peeling soon as that old clutch got done guys play and pre-pandemic you're doing 250 plus dates a year and then you slow down to three dates a year <laughs> right and now you're picking back up again uh, where, where are you headed to next you've got a, a weekend full of shows this weekend yeah yeah we're going to uh, uh kerrville uh lotus we're going to play floors country store uh, as a headliner for the first time. Ah, congratulations. So that's yeah, that's great. Uh, then we're headed back to, thank you. Then uh, we're headed back to Dallas for a, a hometown show. Um, and then we're all over the place. We're going to Colorado. Uh, we're going back through the Northeast uh, with Paul Cawthon in a few months. Cool. We're going to do a whole West Coast tour um, coming up soon. We got, uh, what else are we doing? We got a bunch of Texas dates. I mean, we're pretty much jam-packed. Um, so how many dates do you think you'll end up doing this year? This year, probably close to 200, That's around awesome. 200. It's hard, like, just, you know, the infrastructure isn't all the way back <laughs> yet. Yeah, sure. So it's, uh, it's hard. And a lot of those shows I was playing before weren't all full band, so, yeah. you know, it's easier to roll around in a car alone than it is to drag a, a band and a <laughs> van and everything around. I got you. I got you. Uh, okay. So I was going to ask you something about the touring side of it, and now it has escaped me. It will come back, but uh, not soon enough. Is it fun? Is that what you're going to ask? Yeah, yeah. Is it fun? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, can already, I can already tell you guys have. Oh, no, no. Here, here's what it was. Okay, so uh, you talk about uh, your, your punk rock days, right? I mean, you were, you were in a punk rock band. Right. You've mentioned Jack White and probably the White Stripes, and you got all kinds, of, all kinds of influences. Do you do any of that in your set? And if so, yeah. we want to hear some punk rock at do -Si do tonight. Well, that's a song he mentioned earlier that I thought we probably shouldn't do. So, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. We want to see all the musical stylings of Joshua Ray Walker.
How, how much do y'all want it to rock in the big bar tonight? I think we just go for it. All right.
Man, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> wow. Have y'all had a good time tonight? Have you guys had a good time tonight? Yeah, I've had a great time. Man, thank you again for, for taking time out middle of the week before you head out on tour to come spend the evening with us here yeah, at Dosey Do for the show, man. I had a great time. Man, it's been a lot of fun. Well, we've got uh, we, we've got time for one more. Are you going to hang out and sell some merch? I and am. Sign I'm going to hang out. I'd love to meet y'all, you know, shake your hand. Let's, and, send, uh, let's send them to uh, Kerrville a little lighter than when they got here. Let's buy some T-shirts and some <laughs> vinyl and some hats, everything they got over there. And uh, thank you again to all our sponsors. do -si do thank you for just making this beautiful place where we can do something like this. And... Uh, Man, thank you guys for buying a ticket to be here tonight. We appreciate you being here. Check out our upcoming event sheet. We got, uh, I've got Daryl Dodd, another Dallas native, coming to hang out with mm -hmm. us in a couple of weeks. Uh, Sundance Head is going to be here a couple of weeks, and uh, we've got a bunch of great shows coming up. So come see us again if you enjoyed this format. And uh, man, y'all take us home with something. All right, I think we're going to do voices for you. Fix my pedal. <laughs> you guys want to do it with me? Yeah.
natural Let it roll into the lake First I'll finish off this bottle So it looks like a mistake Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joshua Ray Walker. Thank you.